Hey everybody, Monty Reed here, streaming live, and I'm just getting ready to set up the uh, recording. <coughs> so the recording should be on now. Yep, recording's going. And we're just doing a test. This is an unlisted uh, test on the stream, and uh, we're in Escape from Tarkov. And I am getting ready to go after another run on uh, finishing a quest. But before I do that, I'm just going to warm up a little bit with a uh, scav run in factory. There we go. This is uh, June 26. I started. My son was on break from school, and uh, this is day 20. Well, it's after midnight, so day 23, and I'm level 23. <coughs> I'm hoping to get leveled up to level 24 on day 24. So we'll see how it goes. I've accumulated a, a couple of dog tags. Um, I sold the dog tags the first week and a half, but about a week and a half ago, I started saving them. Love this game. It's a lot of fun. And so I'm hoping that uh, I can share some tips, uh, things that I've learned. Um, one of the things that really was helpful was going in offline um, without any other characters just to walk around. And it gave me kind of the basic idea of the map. And then I also found that if I did um, offline with the um, other players, with the scavs and such. Let's see, gate and office. One on the huh. Really, that's weird. It must have been a player scav because... God, yes, yes, yes. Usually the scavs don't shoot at you. <laughs> Unless, you know... Um, I should have taken that AK and got out of there. <laughs> that was strange that the scav started shooting at me. It must have been, um, I'm guessing it was a player scav. So I should have taken that AK and run, uh, but it looked like my um, scav was reloading. So, but I got two down. Oh, <laughs> Mosin, hilarious. Masun Nagant is how I used to pronounce that, but I hear a lot of people pronounce it Mosin. I don't know, I used to play with those in the old days. So that was an interesting scav run. And I think I'll do a hatchet run next, just for the fun of it. Just kind of warm it up. Day 24, let's see if we can get to level 24. Yeah, I'm not going to bring all this gear in. Uh, let's see. Now, let's sell this off real quick. I like to trade the knives for the SIGs and then sell them. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. The um, knives, um, you get basically if you survive a scab run, you end up with another knife. And you can also pick them up off of scabs. So you accumulate four of the um, knives and you can trade it in for a big P226. Those are the, the black ones. And then the brown ones, you get 10 of those and that gets you an MP5. And that's how I accumulated a couple of MP5s. Uh, it looks like I've used, used them up. So yeah, there's a couple in here. Got a couple of dog tags just over the last uh, week and a half. 
So I'll bring meds and uh, usually do a hatchet run without any medication. And I don't need that. You know, it's a toss up sometimes. If I'm going to bring ammo, I'll bring the 54 by 39, but we'll just uh, go in and see what we can get on a pure, pure hatchet run. need a few more points to get over the top to level 24. <coughs> so uh, for those of you who have been watching my channel you already know that I was an army airborne ranger and uh, one of the things I really enjoy about this game is there's a lot of factors that make it realistic and I find that when I'm in a a battle, a hunt, when I'm being chased or when I'm chasing, uh, it reminds me of the job that I used to have uh, hunting bad guys. And uh, we jump out of perfectly good airplanes, blow things up, and chase bad guys. And so it's kind of uh, fun because I got the thrill, the adrenaline rush uh, of the battles and just none of the risk. So it's, it's really fun to have that sort of reliving the good old days you know there's some a lot of issues that you have to suspend disbelief because it's a video game you know but there's so many parts of this video game that are so realistic and having the live online play with other folks uh, just adds a, a random variety to this that you just can't you just can't program in you know it's uh, literally having the other players being the AI <laughs> so Hatchet runs are fun uh, just to get your skill up. Um, one of the keys is to make sure that you go for the head and uh, move fast. And um, I did bring my keys with me. You always want to keep your keys in the container. Uh, you get a key tool, then you can keep lots of keys on there. And then the wallet uh, allows me to uh, carry different types of cash because there's dollars, euros, and rubles that you can find. And normally, if I did find some dollars, rubles, and um, euros, then it would take up three spaces in my container. But by having the wallet, I can uh, carry uh, up, up to a half a million of each. So we're not going to find that in factory. But uh, that definitely gives me basically two extra spaces by carrying a wallet in there. And then I put that uh, TAC rig, tactical rig, in my container and that gives me 10 spaces instead of nine and so I learned that from watching another streamer uh, nobody uh, he didn't say anything to me about it but I just watched that he had that container or that tack rig in his container I was like whoa wait a minute there's one extra space and uh, Isaac had actually taught me that a lot of the tack rigs give you more space than they take up and so that was one of the things that I noticed and I'm enjoying that extra space so I found that bringing the wallet seems to bring more benefit. All right, now I'm seeing a little lag. He has any medicine. This vepper. Oof. I hear somebody coming. Reload because I haven't searched the vest yet. 
is not one of my spaces out of here. <coughs> not gonna make it. Gate three. Yeah. I'm in so much trouble. So, let's just see if I can get some money into my wallet. I got a little bit. <laughs> Oh, man, I missed. I just wasn't fast enough. I should have gone straight for the safe once I knew I was going to die. But uh, when you see all that red, it's uh, an indicator that I'm not going to make it very far. But look at that. Headshot, axe, and um, so it worked out. Worked out okay. An okay run. Not a good run because I died, but I did manage to get a little bit of money into my container. Would have been better if there was a folding stock and I could have uh, stuffed that in the container, but it's a problem with the rig in there. It only takes two by two, but uh, if I was thinking, I would have gone straight into the office, gone for the cash, forget about the doors or aiming, and just uh, stuff as much in my container as I possibly could. That would have been a better strategy, but still learning. So we'll go here. Let's see. Oh, well, I got 600. All right. So the next thing I need to open the wallet, that's going to work a lot better. But got 630 rubles. So here we go. Another hatchet run. See, I forgot that I was playing as a PMC. For some reason in my mind, I was thinking I was a scab, so I headed up to the office. That's hilarious. Um, but the reality is the office, if, you're, if you get there fast and first, you can get the cash out of the uh, safe stuff it in your container because you know we're doing a hatchet run so the key is get as much into your container as possible and um, then it doesn't matter if you get killed uh, you know the rounds over faster and whoever got you gets your dog tag so bonus for them bonus for me and as a level 23 my uh, dog tags are worth a little bit more than when I was just a four or five so I think at 12 or 13, they're worth, you know, 1,700. I'm not sure what they're worth at 23. I should take a look at my dog tags I have and see how much therapist will pay me for a level 23, and then we'll know. So if you uh, comment, I've got chat going over here. I don't see any comments, which is fine, because, you know, this is actually unlisted. Um, let's see change that okay it's public now <laughs> all right time waiting for the game to load. I remember when I was in um, Somalia. It was an old Russian 
APC that we were using for target practice and I tore off the uh, one of the little uh, label plates off of the dashboard. I have no idea what it says. I've got it in one of the boxes around here. It's got a bunch of Russian on it. Playing the game and seeing all the Russian folks reminds me of the old old days. Alright. Well, let's just see what we can do here. That's a lot better. Spark plugs are worth a little bit. Mm. All right, well, I'm kind of full. If I die, it's okay. Sometimes campers are up there because I have the key. I always hit crouch after opening and then run. There we go. Another successful hatchet run. And of course, the hatchet runs work a lot better if you learn the map. And uh, I learned that with uh, Isaac's help. He, he guided me around. Uh, and also, I got the maps and studied them online. No encounters, just 85 points of <laughs> looting experience. There should be a bonus for survival. I'm, you know, I'm so new. <sighs> Trying to see. Am I going to make it to 24, level 24? Let's see. Uh, I need 3,000 more, so I need to get some combat experience. And this one, we brought in 3,000. If I was on interchange, that would be enough to pay the guy at the power station. So we got 3,000 there, 600 from the previous one. We can go and make a couple of sales. These uh, are not worth as much as they used to be, but they still do have value. I just got to put Douglas Adams 42 in there. And these T-plugs, I needed it for a um, quest, but I'm done with that quest, so... Oh, wait a minute. 
Let me just double check because I think there was another another quest in there. Let's see if I needed any more T plugs. Yeah, T shaped plugs, I've already turned those in. Here we need printed circuit boards, rechargeable batteries, CPUs, and broken G phones. Alright. Power cord. I had found lots of power cords before I got this one. Printed circuit boards. Alright. So let's just since I don't need those now, we'll go ahead and sell them. Let's just sell them both. Six four two. Sell them both at the same price. People can buy as many as they want. And these, some of these cigarettes sell for a lot. Thirteen thousand. I heard the spark plugs were selling for a lot. Let's see what they are selling for. Not that much. Glad I kept the cigarettes. All right, 13,000. And I'm maxed out on my offers. All oh, right, because I have two of those. Oh, and the SIG. Interesting. Okay. All righty. Then. I'm going to save these and sell those on the market oh, later. But these guys, we'll just get rid of those right now. Hmm. Wow, 8,000. Yeah, I think they only listed for nine, so. Better off selling that directly to therapist. And then these injectors. It's not the one that she needs for the morphine is the one I need for the mission. So that propylene or whatever it's called. I can sell that. Now let's see, just uh, a couple days ago I was down to two hundred thousand rubles and I did the quick cash video. Quick cash cash training video. Now I'm at six eighty three. So yeah, stuff is selling good. And see, this is a glitch uh, where it says receive all and there's actually, oh, there it is. Look at that. It's not a glitch. <laughs> now I'm at 700,000. So I've got 500,000 rubles just in the last, uh, last couple of days. So, you know, quick cash training. It works. All right. So we're going to do both of these cigarettes. We'll sell them each. 1242 and that's the glitch that I was talking about and the uh, T plugs Alright, I'm having kind of a glitch going on here where it's not. Yeah, Alright, I'll just leave that alone. Alright, scav is ready. So we're going back and forth between the um, hatchet runs and scav runs. Now this backpack, I'm going to need to put that inside these other, this is a nesting trick that I learned from Isaac. I'm sure a lot of people have seen this before. And we are going to go up here, put that there, put this here. Uh, now I've got all these backpacks nested inside the backpacks. That gives me room. We've got another scab ready. If we can just survive, we've got a nice shotgun and a rig. So, I mean, scab runs are nice because if you can just 
like I said, this quick cash training, if you can just get out. Uh, that was an anomaly, the first one on this uh, where I died, is because usually the uh, scabs don't shoot at you unless you shoot at them. And that's why it makes me think it was a, it was a player, player scav. Because I spawned in, I did nothing, he started shooting at me. So fortunately I killed him, killed his buddy. And what I should have done is grab the AK and ran. But I was um, trying to get some magazines. But because the idea of a scab run or a hatchet run is to get out as fast as you can, I should have just taken the AK and then jumped up. And what happened is while my head was down, while I was searching, I got killed. So, and that's one of the challenges in the game, um, situational awareness. Uh, in reality, you'd normally have a buddy watching your back when you're searching, and when you have teams, you can do that. But in reality, I could have my gun actually pointed forward. If I heard noise, I could be searching. Gate three and camera bunker. Usually the camera's safer. So I'm gonna try to go that way. There's an awful lot of shooting out here. I think this is a pump shotgun. I heard somebody jump down behind me. I need to get ready to fire on them. Go for a headshot. I heard him jump down behind me, so... Just in case. <laughs> I've had so many times where I was... Uh, that countdown timer, and they fired at me, and I'm waiting with this black screen, and I don't know if I survived or not. But this time we made it. Got, got out with the shotgun. I did waste a round. But sometimes with lag, uh, there might have been a person coming into the um, sight picture and kill me without me knowing and so I just didn't want to take a risk and so this is just one of the things you can do to uh, to uh, conserve space so I'd, as I showed before if you're brand new if you're um, trying to leave without um, taking everything it'll say wait a minute you still have have untransferred items are you sure you want to transfer uh, and see if you couldn't fit everything then you'd have to say yes but I don't want to I want to take that knife because the black knives four of those turn into a 226 now I can get out of there and collect my loot and uh, that scab backpack I'm gonna hang on to but the rest of the gear I'm just gonna sell it and turn it into cash so let's see don't have any comments we are public we're playing for 28 minutes so I'm probably gonna shut this down we got one person watching hello uh, I can see a person I don't know who you are but thank you so much for tuning in I really appreciate it uh, I'm gonna do probably one more run uh, if you're interested in me continuing uh, to show you hatchet runs or scab runs let me know and you can help me help decide what I show you because uh, like I had mentioned earlier, I've been uh, only playing this for 23 days, so I am a noob. I'm pretty new to this game, but I am loving it. So, I got a lot of scab vests already, so I'm going to sell that one. This, uh, this rig, yeah, is insured. I'm going to hang on to that. This knife I will trade in. Let me see if we have enough knives to get an a HK yet. We need one more knife and then we get an MP5. Those MP5s are really cool. We will sell, sell the shotgun. Uh, the magazine, you can't just uh, unload it. You have to move the magazine over here, click unload, and then you can put it back. I like to keep the rounds. Uh, I'm going to use those or, or sell them off. I like to get uh, accumulate a bunch of rounds and then sell them off all in, in big lots, you know, 100 or 200 rounds at a time. But we'll go ahead and sell the scab vest and the shotgun. Let's see how much we can get for the shotgun on the market. It says 24,000, so I could list it for 22 and it would go quick. I don't think a dealer's going to give me that much. 
mechanic is offering 16,000, so no. And he's only offering 1,400 on that. Ragman for this scab vest is offering 2,500. And Skier is offering 2,800. So I'll probably sell the hat though. The hats will sell for more if they are required as part of a, for a, for a quest. So these shotguns, twenty-four thousand. So I'll just list it for twenty-two forty-two, and a zero. Gotta have the 42 in there for Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, T plugs, selling for six. Hmm. And my offers are full, so. But my, um, my loot area and my stash is just kind of full, so I need to just sell whatever I can for whatever I can get. Pistol, take that. I got some stuff down here I'm hanging on to. I think the phone, I'll probably list that once I have an opening. So usually I sell the therapist and then next the skier. Hmm, yeah. And then, so therapist first, skier, and then mechanic. And mechanic. That one's insured. 25,000. Huh. Yep. Yeah, I don't need three of those, so we'll let that go. That gives me a little more room stash. Yeah, why not just sell off a little bit of ammo too? Alright. And 744. Message. Okay, well, we are going to continue. Scav's got four minutes out, so we'll just um, make sure I got enough. Oh, see the backpack. I wasn't going to take that in. all those backpacks inside of each other and that gives us plenty of room here in the stash Got 33 minutes so hope you are enjoying this uh, I see we got a couple of viewers thank you so much for watching and here we go idea of the hatchet runs is to get in and get as much loot as possible. Factory, um, the best place I've found for cash is in uh, the office safe. Uh, I have also found cash in jacket pockets and if I have more room in the container um, or uh, I'm, I will um, look in the uh, crates around uh, the map depending on where I spawn in and try to get weapons and carry them out. Uh, sometimes I will bring some uh, 5.45 by 39 with me and also some 762 by 39 because I very often will find an AK or an SKS but there's no ammo. Uh, other maps uh, some of the weapons will spawn in fully loaded uh, but in factory I've never found any loaded weapons in a box uh, I've, I've gotten loaded weapons off of uh, scavs and and players, but in a box, very often you can get an SKS or an AK, but if you don't have any ammo, then there's no point. 
So again, the quick cash training, the idea is to accumulate as much as you can and get to the exit as fast as you can. As a scav, you're limited to whatever exits they tell you, but as a player with the factory key, you have lots of options. You can go to seller, uh, you can go to the zero, and let's see, we are down here. That can be dangerous. There's a chance we can find some players over here or scabs. I hear running footsteps. This is kind of dangerous. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I wasn't fast enough. I have found that sometimes if I jump as they fire, that the bullet will miss me. But the problem with jumping is it takes my stamina away, so by the time I get to them, I don't have enough energy left to hit them with a hatchet. So just in case you didn't notice, running into a big open room against somebody with a gun when you bring a hatchet to a gunfight, not a smart idea. <laughs> Just not a good idea at all. It's better to stay in the rooms and the hallways, and uh, you know you can uh, attract attention uh, by and get them to come into the room and <coughs> try to fight them under close quarters combat. But that was probably the worst move that I could make. I know better, uh, but I was uh, thinking that he might just be around the corner, but. Um, I noticed that the scavs seem to be emulating the behavior of other players. It's like they're learning. And so that scav was smart enough to not be right next to the wall where I would have tried to hit him with the axe. He was out in the middle of the room. So he was doing a very smart thing and he was aimed right at me. So, you know, a lot of video games, the uh, enemy players are pretty dumb. You know, like uh, you'll see. Um, I think it's called CSGO, where a lot of times the guards on guard duty, they're all facing out, just having a cigarette or staring off into <laughs> space. And, you know, you can crouch and sneak up to them and, you know, take them out. And you're choking one guy. There's three other guys around the uh, guard post, but they're all facing out. So they don't notice that you're choking a guy out. It's, you know, it's fun, but it's not as fun as this because it is so much more realistic. checking I didn't see any messages in the live chat so count down timer and uh, if you've enjoyed this while you're watching uh, comment and let me know what you liked about it that so this fold it come on baby stick that in there and this there see I could I could die right now and go to heaven but I'm gonna try to make it up to the office there's other players that have spawned in at the same time and they might beat me some are in here to kill and camp others are trying to get to the office safe just like me cash. Oh, somebody coming in. Of course, they might have been down in the bathroom. Ah. 
<laughs> I got in one swing at him. <laughs> if I would have been a little more smooth, and uh, I could have, uh, because he was crouched, if I would have placed that hatchet right in his head, um, could have taken him out with one swing, as long as I right clicked. But I failed, you know. Uh, there's a little bit of lag, so, you know, my problem. But here the good thing is, you know, right within a few seconds of landing or spawning in, I checked that first crate. And as I was talking about weapons and being able to fold them, uh, that little 9mm, uh, I was able to fold it and stuff it in my 2x2 portion of my tactical rig. And this is why a lot of people won't put the tactical rig in there because a lot of the weapons will fold down as small as three and you can stuff them into your container. Uh, one of the other things that I've learned from watching other players is that I could um, take components off of uh, weapons. I'm probably going to keep that car kit because it is full. And here we got 1,100 rubles, and then this gun, that that grenade's worth eight to ten thousand. The gun is going for 19. Let's see if um, mechanic will give me 19 for it. 16. Yeah, I don't need to be in a rush. I mean, if I wanted to, I could really sell it quick. The grenade's going for 11. Wow, that's pretty nice. So we'll put it for 1042. People always like the grenades. Oops. Get rid of that. And it's going to cost me 489 rubles. And then this guy. for 19. Oh. Alright, well, I have too many things listed, so I will just go in and sell it to Mechanic at a small loss. That's okay. I can't accumulate too much stuff here. There just won't be room, so I've got to have room. Shotgun sold. So 761. Oh, 783. Nice. So from 200,000. scab run now. I like the semi-automatic shotguns and when I was uh, just starting out I noticed that I was picking up a lot of semi-auto shotguns off of scavs and other players so I just stacked them up and started collecting ammo and started using the shotguns and learning how to use the shotguns and then um, I stopped finding shotguns and started finding uh, AKs in the 5.45 caliber and so I just had a bunch of AKs and baby AKs and I would sell off the 10 round magazines and buy 30 round magazines and then I got proficient with the AKs and then um, I found a, a, a thing where I had, was able to trade in two cowboy hats and get a Glock with a 50 round drum and uh, so then I focused on finding cowboy hats and pretty soon I had a bunch of Glocks with 50 round drums and so there was a um, quest where you had to kill a bunch of characters using pistols only and I'll tell you people are pretty surprised when you come at them with a pistol but you don't run out after 8 or 16 rounds you just keep going somebody behind me getting ready headshot nice 
nice. And just sell it off. Now I'll take that light off because the light's worth 10 or 11 thousand rubles by itself. And keep in mind, you got to have room in your stash to transfer everything off of this scav. Oh, good. So we're done with that. Just waiting for the next screen. Uh, we'll strip the uh, mount and the light off of that shotgun and sell it separate. If um, if I've sold my other items, then I may put it on the market. But I'm going to see what a dealer would give me for it first. Can I go back and forth? I can check with the dealer, check with the market. But you just go on here and grab the light, and then take the light off of the mount and then you can sell those separately and got another scab vest which we don't need this uh, grenade will sell for a little bit all right Filter by item shows me they're selling for 19. This one's about to be listed for 18,000. And I don't think a dealer's going to give me that much, but we'll just check and see. He's offering 16,000, so I would have sold it for 16. So might as well just sell it. 8,000, 1,400. Yeah, we'll just sell those. We don't have to wait. Then we'll see if anyone wants to buy this vest. Well, yeah. And then the grenade. I'll just see if we can put that on the market. Should be able to get about six or seven thousand rubles. Six thousand. And see, my offers are kind of full. So we'll see if mechanic will buy that grenade. Peacekeeper, does he want it? Nope. Pray poor. Come on, buddy. Yeah, he'll take it. You know, half price, but the thing is I got the cash and I got space, so. Alright, let's see if we've got enough for that MP5 yet. Look at that. Watch this. An MP5. And it has 30 rounds of uh, ammo with it. And look at this. MP5 50 round drum. No, oh, I should probably put ammo in it though, huh? drums in there. <laughs> I'll just bring the MP5. Uh, actually, let's put this there. Put this there. I'm going to put around in the chamber so you got one extra. Alright, so that was fun. Why don't we, uh, we'll just take, uh, that's my, cr my uh, lowest quality helmet. This looks like a 62. And then what vest I have that's beat up the most. Well, not 11. That's not even worth bringing in. But 43? Sure. I'm live. <laughs> yeah, I'm live, live streaming. So I've just been doing um, PMC and scab runs in factory. What's that? Um, just one more run. Okay.
So I just traded the knives for the MP5, and now I'm taking the MP5 in live with me. This is a chance to insure items. Insurance works a lot better on other maps because um, it's likely that you can ditch your items and nobody's going to find them. Uh, but it doesn't hurt to insure in uh, factory. I've been doing, since I started using the insurance, I've been uh, playing on uh, shoreline and interchange and the woods. I can't remember if it's called woods or forest, but anyway, been in the real outdoors. So we'll see how this uh, MP5, when I've got a weapon that goes full auto, I usually put it on full auto uh, just in case. But because I only have 50 rounds plus the 30, I've got a total of 80. I'll probably put this on three round burst. You have to remember when it's on three round burst, if you don't let go of the trigger, it only fires three rounds. So um, also you can tap the trigger fast enough to just get off one or two rounds. So. You know, full auto works really well if you um, practice the discipline of tapping the trigger. And uh, you can serve your ammunition. And um, there we go. Three round burst. Got to be careful here. There's somebody out there. Now running, they can hear me. And there is lag. That sounded like somebody was coming in behind me. Yeah, don't have the suppressor, so this will make a lot of noise.
So the <coughs> idea is not to die. The idea is to get some loot and get out. Nice. Okay, well that's going to conclude the uh, live stream for uh, we've had an uh, going for an hour. This is a test, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll just uh, sell off some of this loot. I'll probably keep the 50 round drum, but since I have, um, yeah, see, only got 58 points. Got cash though, you know. I'll probably keep the 50 round drum since I already have four uh, HKs, MP5s. Uh, there was two more crates I could have searched, but again, the idea of the scab runs and uh, quick PMC runs is just to get in there, learn how to use your weapons, uh, practice uh, looting bodies, and under that uh, bunker stairwell is kind of nice because there's a dead body that's just there that you can loot. We know the condensed milk goes for a lot. We got 700 rubles cash. Actually, I'm probably going to keep this. I'll just, um, I'm going to use it on my next run, but I'll probably just load some ammo in there. There we go. So look at this, the condensed milk is going for 30,000. <coughs> now it's got to be less than these are all starred. <coughs> huh. For some reason the sort's not looking right. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-four thousand. 24,000. Oh, this is a 28-pack. That's, look, I didn't even notice that. Okay. All right. So 24, let's sell it for 22.42, of course. Let's see what else we can sell. This MP5, it is insured, so we will keep that one. But let's just see if I have another one that's sitting in here. That's not insured. There we go. I can sell that. Fifteen thousand, that's a partial. So if we look at um only functional guns. 28,000 rubles. So let's see how much a mechanic will offer me for that. He does not want to buy it. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Skier won't buy it. Two hundred and thirty five times a hundred and fourteen. I don't know what that comes out to. Twenty six thousand is what he's offering me. Yeah, I'll take that. Okay, 
Well, thanks again, everybody, for watching. I appreciate you coming on and uh, joining me for the live stream. It's been just over an hour. And less than a week ago, we were at 200,000 rubles, and now we are at 859 thousand rubles so since I posted that quick cash uh, training video um, just showed that I actually can use it and um, I hope that this helps you I hope that you can benefit from the videos and the live stream let me know uh, what you think about it in the comments and have a great day